In this lesson, we'll talk about the sine law and how you use it to find angles and sides in uh, any, any triangle. Uh, it, it does apply to right triangles, but we normally use them in oblique triangles, triangles that don't have right angles. And in this geometry sketch pad diagram, I've measured all the sides and angles. So for example, 6.62 is the uh, length of the AB side, uh, 8.98 is the BC side. I've also measured the angles, so when it says angle ABC, we go ABC, so that's angle B, you can call that angle B as well. And I've measured and calculated the sine of each side divided by its opposite side. So for example, uh, angle uh, BAC is this side, so we take the sine of 67.22 and divide it by 8.98, uh, that's the 0 0.10. Uh, the, the units in centimeters are only because we're dividing by a measurement that's measured in centimeters. The sine of angle ABC, which of course is a 70, divided by 9.15 is uh, the side AC side is 0 0.1 as well. And so notice that all of them are the same. Um, if we distort the triangle, the angles and sides can change. But notice that, and actually these values over here can change too, but notice that they're always the same. So for example, I put it up like this, it's the, the sine of all the angles divided by their opposite side is 0 0.07. So we can distort the triangle, but all those ratios stay the same. And that's what the sine law says. The ratio of the sine of any angle to its opposite side is the same for all three angle side pairs in the triangle. Now this doesn't work for the sine ratio or the uh, cosine ratio. For example, if I take the cosine of, uh, let's say, uh, angle ABC and divide that by its opposite side, which would be the CA side, I get this. Now if I do that for another angle side pair, uh, the cosine of, let's say, this side, divided by, and of course the side opposite would be the BC. Okay. Now, they are the same, but if I distort the triangle, notice that they're not always the same. So there is wa there are ways to make them the same, but we want that, that trigonometry to always work. So notice that these are always the same, but the cosine ratios aren't. So this only the sine ratio, it on, it's only the sine law, it doesn't work for the cosine ratios. There is a cosine law that we'll get into in another lesson. Now, this first part is a proof of the sine law. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, triangle that it could be a right triangle. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't look like it is here. So we'll, we'll go with uh, the fact that it's, it's normally a non-right angle triangle, but this does actually work if it's a right angle triangle. So I'm going to drop a perpendicular down. So this is the height or altitude uh, from point A to side BC. And in this right triangle, for angle B, the sine of angle B is its opposite side, H, over the hypotenuse C. So the sine of angle B is equal to H over C, opposite side over the hypotenuse. In the right triangle on this side, for angle C, H is the opposite side, and B would be the hypotenuse in this right, tri right angle triangle on the right side. And so the sine of angle C, and uh, I forgot we we're solving for H here. So um, sine B equals H over C. So if we solve for H, uh, we can write this as sine B over 1. So when we cross multiply, 1 times H is equal to C times the sine of B. So we get uh, H equals C sine B. Now in the right triangle on the right here, H is the opposite side for angle C and B is the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle C is H over B. And if we solve for H just as like we did over here, H would equal B times the sine of C. Now notice in both cases H is the same thing. So that means that C, C sine B has to be the same as B sine C. So we can conclude that because they're both equal to h, they're both equal to the same thing. And if we divide both sides by the product of sides b and c, and the c's divide out here, and the b's divide out over here, then we get sine b over b is equal to sine c over c. And so that is the same thing I was showing in the geometry sketch pad part of the lesson. And in general, and we could draw another perpendicular and include the sine of a over a as well, in general, this is what the sine law looks like. The sine of 
angle A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So those ratios are constant for all angle side pairs in any triangle. Now we normally only use them two at a time. So you'll, you'll never be using a sine law where you have all three ratios at the same time. Now in this triangle, we're trying to find side B. Notice that we have an angle and its opposite side pair. And you need that in order to be able to use the sine law to find any unknown angle or side. You need an angle side pair. And then if you know another angle, you can find the opposite side. If you know an opposite side, you can find the angle opposite it. Now I want to find uh, side B here. So uh, I'll use the angle A side A pair and the angle B side B pair. That's why I'm writing sine B over B equals sine A over A. I don't know angle C and I don't know side C, so it's useless to use uh, side C and angle C here. So now we'll fill in all the knowns. Uh, angle A is 81, angle B is 63, and side A is 18.6 here. And we'll cross multiply to solve for B, so B would be the product of 18.6 and sine 63 divide by the sine of 81. And if you divide that out, you get about 16.8 kilometers for side B. Moving on to example two, we're asked to find in this triangle angle B and side A. And so in this triangle, notice we have again an angle side pair. We know angle C and side C. And so we know side B, so that means we can use the sine law to find angle B. Again, remember, identify that you need a, you have an angle side pair and you can use the sine law. And by the way, if we're going to find side A, we need to find angle A first. So that's where we're finding angle B first. And then we can find angle A and then find side A. So we're using uh, angle B and side B, same with uh, and angle C and side C, because it's the B ones we know. Sorry, it's the C ones we know, and we'll find angle B in a moment. So filling in the known values, we know that side B is 11.65, side C is 9.33, and the angle C is 41. So if we cross multiply, we, well, we're solving for sine B first. So sine B will equal the product of sine 41 and 11.65 divided by 9.33. So we cross multiply, and that's what we get for sine B. And so we'll evaluate this. That works out to approximately 0.8192. And then we'll take the inverse sine in order to find what angle B is. And it does work out to be about 55 degrees. So we'll put 55 degrees in the diagram there. Now, in order to find side A, I need angle A. Well, I know two angles in the triangle, and I know that all three add up to 180. So if I subtract 55 and 41 from 180, I can find what angle A is. And so angle A works out to be about 84 degrees. So we'll put an 84 degrees up here. And now I can find, using the sine law, side A. Now, I know both angle C and its opposite side, and angle B and its opposite side, so I have two different versions of the sine law I could use here. I'm going to use the uh, uh, angle C, side C, uh, and of course I'm finding side A, so I need to use sine A and angle A. Filling in the known values, angle A is 84, we just found that a moment ago. Angle C is 41, and side C is the 9.33. So cross-multiplying, A would be 9.33 times the sine of 84 divided by the sine of 41. And if we evaluate that, we get about 14.1 millimeters for side A.